So we're not going to do much videoing outside today because the weather is atrocious. The winter covers are on, so the fish are all tucked away nicely in their little beds. The filter system is looking pretty good. Tested that yesterday uh, and that's all going well. So today we're going to cover a subject that I've been asked to cover over the last few weeks was how I use my microscope. What is a microscope? How does it work? What microscope do I use? And what other microscopes are available on the market? So let's go and have a look at that. But we're going to do it in the man cave, not out here. Pfft, too wet. So microscopes, lifesavers these are, once you've got a microscope you can virtually be so much more self-sufficient with, with what you're doing and, and how, you're, how you're looking after your fish and how you're spotting problems and being able to deal with them quicker because once you've got a microscope you can, you can then start to, to check on stuff that you believe might be happening in your pond so if you've got any any parasites in your pond it sort of helps with that if you've got things in your pond you want to have a, a close look at you know stuff that may be on you on your fish get it off your fish have a look at it on here and be able to move a bit quicker rather than having to sp contact your local dealer or supplier and then say yeah just get, bring the fish around and bring us a scrape round and you know by the time you've got there most of the stuff on, on your scrape will probably be dead anyway you know the the, the the parasite doesn't last that long out in fresh air and so these things make yourself so much more efficient and able to look after yourselves and make things done a bit quicker to keep your fish alive for longer. So today I'm going to show you the microscope I use, the ones that you can get, other ones you can get, the cost of them, how they work uh, and how you can kind of adapt them to make them work for you and little tricks and tips that I've learned uh, you know just by use really, by trial and error. So the microscope I use, I've had this for a number of years now, this is a, it's called a Swift, it wasn't an expensive item at all I would say I maybe paid for about five years ago around about a hundred pounds for this cracking little tool it does it has all the little magnifications on it that I need I've spotted everything from fluke to costier you know the smallest parasite you can get easy peasy with this uh, it does have a little light on the back here which you can flick on and it, it flicks a, a little light you can see this come on there which which either shines up or you can flick it on another setting to shine the light down so the light can either shine up from the base here or down from the top run by a couple of batteries in the bottom of the unit itself the three and in fact I've had them batteries in for years as well I can't remember last time I ever changed them batteries in there because they do last forever so uh, you can change little bits and pieces on these you can change the 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 eyepieces this is an eyepiece that um, Alan Udale, bless him, sent me over. Uh, this was the original that I had. This was a times 10. So that was the original that came with it. And Alan, bless him, had a, a times 25 available, which just makes life a little bit more easier now. I'm finding I don't have to use the, the, the times 40 anymore. And again, I'll show you how these work in a moment. But so, so this is a pretty standard model. You know, this is how you kind of zoom in and zoom out, and I'll show you all that in a minute. And pretty standard model these are. You don't have to spend a lot of cash on these things. And I'll go through other models and, and other types of of these uh, microscope in a little while to show you what else is on the market there, and you can make your own mind up and and what you like to do. So, so this is mine. Let me show you how it works. Now, when you get one of these units, try to get as many bits and pieces with them as you can, because a lot of them come with accessories. This came with this came with mine. I had some additional slides so there's, there's a number of slides I have in here and again I'll show you how these work in a moment uh, these are the top glasses the ones that you put on top of your whatever you're trying to look at and again to replace these cheapest chips really these they're, they're not expensive at all to, to replace uh, always try to get hold of one of these little pipettes because with the with the pipette once you've got this it's you need a little drop of water on a sample of of whatever you're taking of your biopsy your scrape whatever you want to call them uh, because you find a lot of the parasites do actually float around in the water that you're looking at and when, once you've dropped a, just a, a spot of water on top and then put your plate on it just gives you that little bit more wiggle room of to see what you can see uh, I've got some spares um, cotton buds again this was just for, for cleaning stuff you know if I'm going to clean lenses and whatever um, and then a, a, a actual scrape card 
is mega essential I would say you know these without these you can't do your scrapes you can't get all your your, your, your biopsy so you, when as soon as you, you're, you're scraping up the back of the koi you know to to get and again we'll go through how how this works in a moment to get your biopsy and then that goes from there onto your uh, slide so you know get as many of these bits and pieces as you can with it when you're looking for a microscope because there is lots and lots of options that, pit, that the companies put in with them that come in handy as well so let me just show you how the microscope works so scraping fish i'm sure lots of you have seen how to scrape a fish if not i'm trying to find some video here of when i've done it in the past you know basically with your scrape card this potentially is a fish head uh head here tail down the other end uh, these are the gills so what you're trying to do is you're trying to go from from the head and go down the fish with the the edge of your scrape card or your credit card or whatever kind of card you think about using uh, again no, no sharp edges because you've got to be really careful you don't damage the koi's uh, scales or skin depends if you've got scaleless fish or not so you're sort of going from from the head of the fish and going down past its gill uh, sometimes you can flip it over and get some scrape from the belly from the actual back itself you know it's really where you're kind of getting the, the decent amount of mucus on the edge of your scrape card uh, and then from your scrape card you grab a slide and then you slide you get whatever's on, been on your scrape card onto your slide itself Put the slide to one side i usually just lip mine over whatever i'm using so i can pick it up without having to sort of play around with it it's just how i have you know i'll go from there to there nice and steady then grab your little pipette a little bit of water pond water and just literally blob blob so you've got a little pop blob like that onto your 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 slide and then you're getting a little bit of these the slide cover slide cover over the top and literally drop it from a couple of millimeters up top bingo and there you go so now you've got now you've got this glass slide with a little bit of water over the top or underneath it with your scrape or whatever you've got. And then that then goes under the microscope. And then you flick on your light or whatever you want to be looking for on the top or the bottom. And then you can start doing your uh, looking for stuff. Now I've got a really good example here just to show you under the microscope about what you kind of things you can find is the the scale it's a scale of a, a fish i used to have i had a while back and this ended up in the filter system so today we're just going to have a quick look at a scale and see what a scale is made up through the microscope so for the purpose of this little demo all i'm going to do is i'm just going to put the scale onto a, onto a slide uh, and then slide it underneath the microscope and have a look eh? Now what I always do, these little bar things here, this is, this, these are there to hold your slide in place. You've kind of put them there and it holds the slide in place where you put it. I, I move these out of the way to be honest. So now we've got the scale on. What, I'm gonna, what I always start with is the lowest amplification. And basically move, you've got the little rolly things at the side here. Let me just move forward a bit so you can see him. You've got little rolly things at the side here. This moves the, the slide up and down. And that's moving it into or out of focus. So it's a case now of me putting my eye to the, to the screen. And bringing it into focus as much as I can. And then I can just basically adjust by changing the, the different levels. And going to a higher magnification to have another look. And then moving again, moving this up and down. Now, as I said, I'm continually adjusting this, just little teeny weeny little movements just to see if I can get the, the screen right and to get the focus right. And even when I've got the focus, when you've got a sample under here, which is fluidic, is it's always moving. So you, that little spot of water there, that could be, you know, hundreds of a millimeter thick. Uh, but because you've got potentially things wandering around on the screen is, is just little teeny weeny adjustments and again I, Again moving the slide around a little bit just to have a look at different areas But that's what a scale looks like off a fish. It's quite cool, isn't it? Now a little hack that I've got for you is you, you can buy little screeny things for these or you can buy these with a that plug into your laptop or plug into your telly or whatever they want to plug into but I've got a little hack where you can just use your mobile phone to do this is to when you stick your mobile phone on Take it to camera and put it on record, or you can go on photo, whichever you want. So let's do it on, uh, let's do it on video. 
and then all you're doing then is you're putting your camera you know one of these three cameras whichever one it's going to be you're putting your camera up against the and hold it right over the lens like thus and then you can basically start zooming in and zooming out without me even having to look look at that and that's just me holding my camera against the eye and what he's doing is just he was looking at what i was looking at so then what you can do then is you can just press record and it'll record whatever you've got and you can look back at it Superb, eh? Now you can get these microscopes in loads and loads of different sort of designs. You get some with the twin uh, eyepiece things. You can get them, that, like I said, to attach to your laptop, to your attach to your TV. You know, I'm putting a number of pictures up on the screen now of others you can buy, but it depends how much money you want to spend. For me, you don't have to spend a lot of money. It depends how trendy you want it. Do you want to go to your, your pond and? get your biopsy and then see it on your big TV in your house or just want to just stick your stick your phone on the end of the on the end of the the lens and and do it through your phone it's it's so much it depends on what you want to spend and how, how much you're looking into how, how deep to get into what you're trying to do any replacement bits and pieces are dead cheap you know they're dead cheap to replace you get loads of off, off Amazon and I'll put a link below to a cam I've, I've tried to get hold of another one of these cameras but the that I can't get another one of this camera so I found another similar one at a similar price and I've put it in the description below if you're thinking about getting one of these but I wouldn't go out spending hundreds of pounds on on the trendy ones to go on my telly unless I could afford it you know if I could afford it of course I would I'd, I'd, but I'm thinking maybe I'd spend a couple hundred quid on, on a new fish or on some food for the fish <laughs> But I can honestly say that I'm sure I've saved a number of my fish from, you know, potential disaster uh, and death in the pond with being able to look after them with this and not being able to rely on somebody else or even missing what was in the pond and what I have to deal with. I think what I do need to get hold of though is, a, is another chair. Because as I'm talking to you, I'm just disappearing down into the floor. <laughs> Hang on, let me just... Ooh. There we go. I wonder how long I'll be up here before I go back down to the floor again. So if you're thinking about uh, getting any of the equipment or the stuff that I use on QuickPod Lifestyle, I've left a load of links in the video description that uh, is for everything that I use basically on the channel. Um, I've tried to find the best prices and whatnot on Amazon and I'm also f affiliated to Amazon so every time you make a purchase it doesn't cost you any more money but I get a few pennies of commission from the sale that's made from the link that I've left in the description below. So by all means click onto that link links on the description below and you get all the bits and pieces and tools that I use on the channel. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, share for Quipod Lifestyle, ding the bell for notification and click the like because that makes all the difference to the algorithms. Apparently. I keep telling you this because apparently it does. So, <laughs> so thanks very much for watching Quipod Lifestyle. 